Hello! I either fixed my lighting or broke it, and I don't know which, so you tell me. When I was in high school, I was a very different, very straight person. In my mind, at the time, I was cis, I was straight, I was straight edge, I was a child of God, perhaps even God himself, I wasn't sure. But I think that's all cis white men. So it was quite a surprise for my parents when I told them that I was joining the school's gay straight alliance. It is mind-blowing to me, like unbelievable, that even like six or seven years ago, however long that was, there was something called a gay straight alliance. Like we weren't even saying LGBT yet. I mean the name sounds like it crawled out of 1960. I'm honestly not too surprised at how behind we were because I do come from a very, very conservative area. Like, I come from a place where one of the biggest and most prestigious clubs at the school was the Future Farmers of America, so it stands to reason that the least big and least prestigious club would be the Gay Straight Alliance. So why did I, a former, mind you, former, cis straight male, join the GSA? Why, for the same reason a cis straight male does anything, of course. Coochie. Because my girlfriend was in it. That's why. We were the allies. So being who I was, a junior in high school who had been indoctrinated into conservative politics for my entire life, to the point of religious worship of people like Bill O'Reilly. Even if they're not transgender, what if they're just a transvestite? No, this- Like in Rocky Horror Picture Show. Which- what? GSA was a huge leap for me. I remember going in there early on and feeling like I was treading in territory where I wasn't welcome. Like, this is not my space. I really, really hate to draw this comparison, but it was like in Borat 2 when Borat goes to the fucking synagogue and there's Jews there and he's like, please don't hurt me, please don't kill me. That was me at GSA. Oh my God, did they turn me gay there? Did they pink pill me when I wasn't looking? Speaking of turning people gay, I'm gonna completely derail everything here to tell a very fun story about one of the members of GSA. There was this kind of flamboyantly gay guy in the club. And one day I was talking to my mom about GSA and he came up in conversation and she was like, wait a minute, what was his name? And she informed me that apparently we went to preschool together. And not only did we go to preschool together, I almost got expelled from preschool because I used to bully the shit out of him. <laughs> Apparently I used to throw blocks at his head until he cried, and I almost got kicked out of preschool for it, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, from that moment forward, my headcanon was always that I turned him gay by causing brain damage with the blocks, and for a while that was homophobic until I became gay. Now it's okay. It's still not okay, that's mean. He's a cool guy, I'm so mean to him. I'm just like fated to be mean to this man. I hope he's okay, I hope he's doing well. Anyway, enough about him, there are other gays to discuss. For example, the teacher, who was very cool and very gay. I actually had him for Spanish class and he would tell all kinds of crazy stories about like the 80s and 90s and going to Spain to hang out at the discotheques, whatever that meant. Years later I realized this man was going on gay pilgrimages and honestly that is baller. He was pretty cool but he had some rules for the club that kind of sucked. He didn't make these rules but they did have to be enforced unfortunately. So we couldn't talk about things like self-harm, you know, suicidal thoughts, HRT, especially DIY HRT, pretty much anything related to the struggles of being gay. We couldn't talk about. Because if we did, not only would he have to report us to the school counselor, who was a complete and total bitch, by the way, and also it would endanger the club itself, so we had to try to stay quiet about that. And our solution to this was amazing. Behind his back, and I don't think he ever found out about this, we kind of coordinated this after school, after school club. So we would all meet up at GSA. And then after GSA, there'd be like an after party at the local playground. We would all get together there and talk about the things we weren't allowed to talk about in GSA. So GSA was like the party side, the fun side. We'd talk about like how cool gay rights are. And then we would go talk about how much we want to kill ourselves at the playground. I didn't get to participate much in those discussions because at the time I thought I was a perfectly stable, perfectly functional young man. If I had known what was going on in my own brain, I would have had a lot to say at those meetings. But I didn't, so. One thing in particular that did jump out at me at those meetings though was a lot of the talk about DIY HRT. It was so insane to me because I believe there were two trans mask individuals in that club and they were both doing DIY. And when I would listen to them talk about it, I would be like, oh my God, why would you do that to yourself? Why would you, why would you change your body in such ways. Art thou insane? What is thine damage? And I never said anything about it, but it always confused me that someone would one, do HRT, and two, do it without a doctor. And in retrospect, these kids had no choice. They were backed up against a wall because they had abusive parents. They couldn't ask for HRT or puberty blockers or whatever you could get in 2013. So the trans kids in the club were relatively open in talking about mental illness and self-harm and left-wing politics and all kinds of crazy things. My brain just could not 
not comprehend at the time. And my mental response to that was just to form this opinion of disgust and bewilderment. And you know, for years before and after meeting them, they were the only trans people I ever knew. So I allowed my opinion of all trans people to be built on a couple of kinda gross high school kids. Which is part of the reason why I just repressed being trans until I was 23, because I was like, no, I'm not like that, I'm not like them. I refuse to be like them. When looking back, I should have been more like them. But enough about that, we all know how that turned out. God, another really weird thing about the era is just that that was the era where gay marriage was legalized. Like, people who don't have a stake in the LGBT community like to pretend that queer people have just always had rights. But gay marriage was legalized in 2013. We had a pizza party in the GSA when I was in high school because gay marriage got legalized. Less than 10 years ago, gay marriage legalized. Gay rights? Over. No longer a problem. So you may be wondering, if we couldn't talk about important things, why did we have a GSA at all? Like, what did we do? And frankly, we were wondering the same thing. Every meeting we would come in and we would talk about nothing and then we would just leave. It was literally just like the club where you go vibe. So we decided at a certain point that we needed purpose, we needed a meaning, and most importantly, we wanted to get sanctioned so we could get school funding. For what? I don't know. Were we gonna throw a gay marriage? I don't know. Anyway, in an attempt to get sanctioned, we decided we were gonna set out to do useful things and make the school district think that we were worth funding. And after two or three brainstorming sessions, our best idea was community service. Because Beta Club just wasn't pulling their weight. Our first act of community service was going to be cleaning up the school grounds, going out into the hedges and picking up garbage and stuff, doing work for the janitors so they didn't have to. So we went out, we had our garbage bags, we had our gloves and whatever, picking up garbage, having a good time, feeling useful, when all of a sudden things came to a screeching halt. Because someone found a condom, a used condom, a recently used condom, on the steps leading up to the auditorium. And it was at that moment that our aspirations of becoming sanctioned died completely. The teacher had to come pick up the condom, and then he sent us all inside, and it was over. So that was pretty much it for GSA. There weren't a lot of kids in it, and eventually we all kind of gave up on that like clandestine Dumbledore's army thing we were doing at the playground. And I'm pretty sure the club disbanded after we all graduated, but it was a fun vibe while it lasted. Looking back, I really wish that I had listened more in that club and been more receptive, because I might have found some things out about myself a little bit sooner. Because who knows, maybe I could have gotten E earlier. Imagine starting E at like 17, that would have been Poggers. God damn it, I said poggers again. One thing I will say about the GSA, even though the name was kind of backwards and dated, nobody really got picked on for being in the club. Like when I told people I was in GSA, nobody looked at me weird or like bullied me or anything. I think that says a lot about our generation because even in the 90s, you'd get fucked with for being in GSA. It like wasn't cool to be gay. But now it's so cool to be gay that we have the term queer baiting floating around out there. And that is a whole ass video idea. I should do that. I should do, should I do the queer baiting video? I feel like my input would be disappointingly brief. You let me know, in the comments, preferably. And if you don't want to let me know, tell me something about your GSA. Was it cool? Was it called GSA? Or did you have a better name for it? Did you get fucked with for being in the club? Did the other kids fill up a sock with bars of soap and then beat you over the head with it in your sleep until you cried and screamed? I certainly hope not. But if they did, tell us the story. Bye!